Hello and welcome my friends. Uh, welcome to another episode of Pierce Key Method. We have some work to do today. The Kariba tank needs an overhaul. After the last feeding, there was a lot of, uh, you know, like sort of territorial pow out that was going on in the tank. And uh, yeah, sure enough, they really tore up the tank. I'll show you in a minute. I'm going to dive in there. And I don't know if you recall, but last time I was cleaning that tank, uh, one of them whiskered against me. I wasn't sure if this was just like a show off or they really intent on, uh, you know, fighting back, sort of defending their territory. Whatever happened, uh, that was a scary moment. Uh, you've seen what they can do to the chub and the welts they leave inside of a body that's swallowed, just about this size. So my finger or, you know, my forearm would offer quite a bit of a feast for these guys. So anyway, I'm gonna go in there again, rearrange things, add some water, do some basic maintenance, commotion as I call it, and then we're gonna move into uh, feeding. Feeding today is going to be a little different. Uh, I did go outside, as you saw, I found a snake. I think he has basically succumbed to the elements and uh, simply, you know, died. Uh, I don't know if he was hunted down and left. Either way, we've discovered him laying there in the snow under a snow cap and uh, Sure enough, uh, we'll be able to utilize and feed one of the piranha packs with a fresh uh, snake. Um, it's a gardener snake. Not sure which pack is going to, uh, you know, devour the snake. The adults have met a snake before. There's a whole series on it, and they have, uh, you know, devoured it. They have feasted on it. The juveniles obviously haven't seen anything but a bluegill and a chub, so we have yet to even show them some frogs. And then of course the Kariba. I'm hoping to catch a frog soon and introduce new food, new uh, new stuff, you know, new sources to the Kariba rescues. Um, there's only four of them, but they're growing substantially and their ferocity, you know, the ferociousness of their feeding speaks for itself. Um, nothing further, my friends. Uh, let's move on and get to the phase two, so stay tuned. All right, everyone, time to dive into this tank and uh, fix it up. Obviously, hose on, shirt's off. All right, let, him, let me bring you in closer. Obviously, so you can see more or less everything there is to see. All right. Here we go, my friends. <laughs> so far, so good. How did this came out undone is beyond me. But somehow they managed to drop this whole tree stump down. And the thing that was on top of it holding it down as well. Alright. It's so bad. This is all good here. So this plant here somehow. <laughs> all right. All right, no worries. <laughs> they uh, pretty much stayed away the whole time. See, they come out, they know it's me, so it's no, nothing new, but uh, time to bring in the hose. All right, so we're just gonna add a little water. Nothing major, 
once more is just to level it out. So there it is, my friends. I gotta hold this hose because it's cutting off the circulation, so to speak. But uh, yeah, almost there. <laughs> All right, that pretty much does it. Ah, the Kariba tank has got some extra water. All right, so I guess we're done here. That went smoothly. Um, this will pretty much prep them up for, like I said, the commotion and then reward in the form of food. So, so there it is, my friends. Commotion and then reward are feeding method or my method of uh basically you know keeping predatory fish especially they have the reputation of being quite timid and whatnot and then not not very interactive as a matter of fact shy and boring as most have labeled them for me it's been a completely different uh experience as you noticed the piranhas are very interactive they still exhibit you know a great deal of caution because they are cautious predators they appear on everyone's menu therefore they are very you know hesitant to reach the surface etc etc as we have talked about before anyway uh, the cleanup on the Kariba tank is done now it's time to source some food and feed them we're gonna move into that phase in a little bit especially since there's too much glare I usually wait to the evening hours to actually capture the uh, feeding in much better lighting. Everything else is intact. Everything else is in order. So, uh, well, let's move to the next phase. And in case you are wondering how you can, uh, you know, in this miserable time, stay in shape, uh, here's a way I figured sometime before where you can stay independent stay independent of uh, gyms gym great outdoors is your gym so what you could do is basically find yourself a pull-up bar which will more or less include your back muscles <clears throat> your deltoids as well as your biceps so there's one way to well let's just say stay in shape One set. What you're going to do is more or less five of these to failure. Meaning all you can do and drop and then three or four more times to failure each time. Obviously it'll cash you out, but that's the point. You don't have to do too much and get the results that you're after. It's basically the effectiveness of the training. All right, <laughs> well, there's one way. Now, you combine that uh, with some push-ups. And what I like to do it on the stairs is because it gradually becomes easier as you elevate yourself. So, start with the hardest, which is the lowest, and they go up higher and higher. Again, try to fail on each one. Since it will take a long time for me to cash out, and I don't want to make this video about the workout itself, I'm just demonstrating, okay? So let's say this is my last one. I'm going to rest and then climb up. This will make it a little easier, but remember, you already failed on the previous one, right? So again, going to go until you fail when you do I take a brief break 30 seconds or so and then climb up higher now it'll get even easier now but again you are more tired now and so on so 
that is a combination of my suburban workout, as I call it. For those of you interested, I have another channel. I just don't feel like loading everywhere, everything. So I'll just drop a little hints. Hints that you could probably capitalize, utilize, as you already know, basic fitness, exercise, and all of that, and it's important. However, when the gym shut down, and you still want to do something and be quite productive at that, you can combine pull-ups, body weight training, engaging your arms, shoulders, your back, and then combining it with push-ups, which involves your chest, your triceps, your back as well, a little bit, as well as your abdominals, and uh, creating what I call a all-around good workout for upper body. Your lower body workout has another whole nother spiel. Uh, there is one more form of uh, workout that I really like and enjoy actually. It's also, also quite productive. Uh, it's chopping some wood. However, I've been advised by my surgeon not to, uh, you know, perform this type of movements as a, you know, the jerking and whatever has uh, affected my C4 as well as my you know L4 is already blown out so <laughs> I have to take you know precautions so no more chopping wood splitting wood which is really really fun and a great way of really you know creating some strength training at that anyway uh, the idea here my friends is to basically utilize every ounce every fiber in your body while you're working out the you know uh, effectiveness of it ultimately is only as good as the well the design and the commitment so if you rest too long or you get distracted or well, the entire process takes longer than 40 minutes you have lost the productivity or uh, you are losing productivity you're still getting results they're just not going to be not going to be coming as quickly uh, I've seen people come to the gym for eons on and look the same which maybe is what they want is maintaining however for the amount of effort put into it they should be seeing better results this is it this is kind of the idea you saw the results behind you know feeding natural and creating most natural environment for your uh, you know pets for your companions once you do that for yourself which is exactly this go outside and be fearless use this you know as your playground and, uh, and use it to your advantage I mean once again you know results speak for themselves the proof is in the pudding if I were to uh, tell you oh this that and I'm doing completely something else you'd right away you would caught on so I'm sure that at this point I'm making you a believer that natural is best that getting out and being part of it is the way yeah I almost forgot I have to get a few worms for the Oscars I always under the stumps first if not I'll just uh, you know quick dig shovel and whatnot but yeah sure enough once again right on up you know right outside your doorsteps plenty of bugs and insects that you can feed to your fish such as Oscars and any cichlids and just pretty much any fish that could you know fit the uh, prey in its mouth it'll chomp it up and eat it so uh, let's get some worms for the Asker red rooster and his companion let's see what this guy will offer <laughs> oh yeah there's a sweetheart a big old night crawler and a few more leaf worms that'll offer snack for the little Oscar the little Oscar with no name so there it is a quick meal for the Oscar <laughs> freshies going right into the tank ah, so there it is some fresh worms just picked off from under the stumps rocks or whatever you left now it's time to put them in a the tank well 
I'm just gonna drop them right in and see who gets it. There's a couple of couple of bluegills in there as you can see, so hopefully they won't they won't steal from the askers. But all got loaded either way is good stuff. Let's see. Asker goes first, red rooster. Here buddy, here, here, you're not seeing it. Nice. Ooh, that a, oh, that was a nice jump. Did you guys see that? It just half launched himself out, out the tank. Here goes the little guy. This side, this side. Yeah, everybody's getting some. Well, there it is, my friends. Eat up. Fresh worm. Dirt and all. <laughs> Best way. That's how we do it. Yeah, he's got himself some snacks. This little guy's not doing well. He's getting really beat up by the red rooster, and I don't think he's gonna make it. He hasn't been even feeding, so. Well, hopefully this worm will bring life to him. The rooster is just a mean little fella. All right, my friends, so here's the snake that we have found earlier and bagged it. I left it out, here's the thaw, and it is definitely thawed. So let's get them in the tank, feed them the piranhas.